Good evening, everyone. I miss all of you. I haven't seen you in a while. So we miss you too. I'm glad to be here today. Even though I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, and I swear to you, it was beautiful. Okay, so you gotta trust my word. And so the first slide was like flower, uh, or like dry leaves going everywhere. I'll, I'll send it to you via email so you can enjoy. <laughs> Uh, but right now, I don't have anything, and I don't have my sequence either, so I'm going to use my faith, and we're <laughs> going to do this together. So we're going to talk about faith today, and when I was studying, preparing for this talk, I came across, someone came across my mind, and and this little girl is a role model for faith and her name is Anne Frank. <coughs> you guys know Anne Frank? The diary of Anne, Anne Frank? Anne Frank was a little Jewish girl that had to hide during the war. She, her family, uh, two families actually, it was her family with another family. They uh, they were hiding for two years. This little, they, they all lived in, the eight people living in the little room, and after the two years, they were all sent to uh, concentration camps. The only one that survived was her father. And a little before going to hiding, to her hiding place, Anne was gifted a diary for her birthday. And she took that diary with her when she went to hiding. And she decided to write, and that's the diary of Anne Frank, and, Anne, and they were hiding in Amsterdam. So if you go there today, the house, the hiding place, became a museum. So if you want to visit, I'm sure there are a lot of energies there. And she was a special spirit. <coughs> I know that, and we know that by, by reading what she wrote. And even in those horrible situations, there are many passages in, in her diary that she would say, and this one in particular, she said that all my ideals should be now dead, but they're more, more alive than ever. For all the things I have seen, I should not trust mankind anymore, but I do, because I think in reality, <coughs> all men are good. So how come a little girl that is hiding, and she had, she, she, they were a very well-to-do family. She was brought up with almost everything. And they were deprived of almost everything for her hiding. And she knew what was happening outside. How come that little soul could still, that we know is not a little soul, it was a little body, huge soul, could still say that? Not only say that, write that. What did she have? What did she have? <coughs> faith. She had faith. And faith, when you is once you have it, guess what? Anything can happen, and that will never die. It will stay with you forever, because it's part of evolution. Once we learn something, it sticks with us. What when? forever. So once you acquire faith, you have faith, that's going to be with you forever. And this little girl, she taught us that that is possible to have faith. And a lot of people sometimes, I think, they complain, don't they? Like, I don't know how to have faith. I don't know how to really trust God. People that easily despair. That's a lack, lack, uh, a lack of trust in God. We all have that potential, don't we? Because where are the laws of God? What are the laws of God? The Spirit, they told us, where are the law, laws of God? All the laws of God are inside of us, in our conscience. Every single one of us. We all have those. And where is God? God is outside and inside of us. Science has already proven 
um, Dr. Amit Goswami, he already studied that there is a point inside of our brain, right? That is co it's called what? The point of God. So they did an ex experiment, and this experiment, they found that when the subject was, uh, was hearing the name of God, no matter in what language, the, not only the, a language that the subject understood, but any language, that one point in the brain would light up. That one specific point in the brain, the subject's brain, would light up. And they passed it with many other subjects, and the result was always the same. Which means that we all have what? That light, the spark, that connection with God and faith inside of us. All of us, we have that. It's innate, it's there. But what is our challenge? Our challenge is to discover it. Our challenge is to connect to it. Our challenge is to know how to use it. Jesus, our teacher, one of his many moments that he got upset with the apostles, because he used to get upset with the apostles many times, because remember, and, and, and that is, it makes us very hopeful. It makes me very hopeful knowing that he had a hard time with the apostles, because he has a hard time with me, and he didn't give up and the, with the apostles. He didn't give up, and the apostles did a good job. And you know what? If the apostles did a good job, we can do it too. We can do a good job. So in one of these moments that Jesus was a little mad, let's go back to, yeah. So this, this child, this young man, he was suffering from seizures. He would throw himself on fire. He was, it was said that he was possessed by a demon. Knowing that we know there are no demons, there is no devil. And even the word demon back then used to mean what? Just a spirit. Demon is a spirit. So he was possessed by a spirit. Probably what? A spirit that did not wish him well. And we know that the spirit, when, when, when a spirit is obsessed with us, is because usually we have what? A history together. Because remember, we incarnate many times. And that's probably something that was not solved. And so this, what, this spirit had this connection with this young boy, and he was really, har really harming him, and himself, because the spirit, instead of studying, learning, working in the spiritual world, the spirit was wasting time. Because what he was doing there, he was not getting anything from what he was doing with this child, this incarnated young man. So, and the father, uh, how fathers and mothers get, they get desperate when they see their sons, and, right, and daughters suffering, ran to the apostles and asked the apostles, could you please save my son? And guess what the apostles did? They tried. <laughs> they tried. Lay your hands, they tried. Did they get, did, were they able to do it? Were they able to relieve, relieve the, the boy, the young boy of the spirit? No. So the father came to Jesus and go, Jesus, your apostles were not able to help my son. Could you please help me? And Jesus laid a hand. And the spirit, would, because of his moral superiority, superiority the spirit, what, left the child alone. And Jesus turned to the father and said, your faith has healed your son. Your faith has healed your son. Jesus didn't say, God healed your son. Jesus didn't say, I healed, saved your son. Jesus said, your faith healed, saved your son. Because, and then we'll go back to that, we have to have in mind, there's not only one, it's a whole circle. It's a, it's a, we have to have a whole, whole circle of all participating parts in the circle, having faith for, in order for some, uh, some certain things to happen. And when, he, after, right after that, Jesus got upset and he called the apostles, didn't he? He called the apostles and said, what happened? 
How long would I, I'm not gonna stay with you long. My time is coming. What are you gonna do without me? Haven't you learned anything? Haven't you learned anything? Why Jesus, you always ask them, haven't you learned anything? What is learning? Is understanding, right? So Jesus taught us how to acquire faith. You acquire faith by understanding. Understanding what? The laws of God. Once we understand or start understanding the laws of God, we are sure, we are confident. For example, if we are confident that God is good, right? That God wants us well, can we despair? A person that knows inside, not only the brain, but also the heart, that God is good and God wants us the best for all of us, can we despair? We can never despair because one thing doesn't go with the other. Because if you're sure, you have faith, because faith is confidence. Faith is knowing with no doubt that that thing is true. And what thing is true? The teachings, the teachings of Jesus, the power of love, right? The power of helping, the understanding that all the material things don't stay behind, that they're, they're not more important than relationships, that taking care of one another, they're evolving ourselves. So uh, by understanding that and bringing to inside of you, and when you have something that in, is inside, that you know, it, it necessarily, you have to what, act upon it. Because if I know that charity is something that is what? It's necessary. Why is necessary? Why is charity necessary? Logically, let's use reason. Why is charity necessary? First of all, we reincarnate many times, right? Today, I might not be, what? I might not, today, if I have, I have food, I'm in the US, I, I'm able to get a job, but tomorrow, let's say if I'm in the other position, right? Don't I want someone to help me? That's also the law of society. We have to, what? Help each other. And we're not ready. Remember, all of us, we have evolved in a little bit. So we need the other. We need the other in order to what? To evolve the other parts that we have not evolved. So charity is necessary. Right? And once you know that, and once you know also the important importance of love, it is natural that you're gonna give. We might start giving without really completely understanding because we might think, well, I have to give. I haven't understand, I don't have it inside of me yet completely why I have to give or my heart doesn't push me, but I wanna push myself because I know that's the right thing to do. And that's why in the Bible, in many passages, Jesus talks about the acquired faith. Something that you do what? Gradually. And the spirits that tell, tell us all the time that we have to what? Work. Work where? With others, like to make sure the other, the other people, they, they develop their own faith? No, that we do. Because we are responsible. We are responsible for our destiny. We are the owners of our destiny. Now, when we say faith, do we, and, and we say that faith is important, am I saying that you have to believe in a special religion, in a creed, um, or in a doctrine? Is that faith? That's religion. And we might, must not confuse faith with religion, because these are two separate things. Especially when, when you start learning spiritism, you see how apart they are. Because the faith that Jesus is talking about here is the faith of understanding, the reasoning, the knowing you're part of the world, the knowing that God loves you, knowing your place, knowing why others need you, 
knowing why you need others, knowing that you have more chances. That's why Kardec always said, and then he passed it along. Actually, the spirits taught him that and he passed it along to us, thankfully. That spiritism could be for any religion. Spiritist teachings could be for any religion. It does not matter. And Kardec is, it doesn't matter if you're Catholic or if you're Jewish, if you're a Muslim, if you're a Muslim. The Spiritist teaching, the teachings of Spiritism is for everyone. Why? Because why the Spiritism, why, what is it? What do we study? What do we, what do we learn? Are there, dog, are there dogmas? No. We're learning natu the natural laws, the moral laws. And these are the same for what? For everyone. It doesn't matter if you don't believe it, if you don't understand it now. It's like saying, well, I don't believe that the, the earth goes around the sun. There are people that still don't believe that. <laughs> right? And the person, they can say that, but it won't change that what? It does. Some people might say, well, I don't believe in life after death. But guess what? They're still going to die. They're still going to be alive because they don't really die. We don't die. And it's amazing because we're very stubborn. There are spirits that are no longer with a body. They don't have a body. And they still don't believe in afterlife. They still don't believe in afterlife. Especially some very religious spirits that had their beliefs founded in doctrines that the last afterlife would just come after, for example, the, when Jesus came back. M many spirits, they'll wait inside of their coffins for that moment. And then the, and, and God is, and we have the divine providence, they will come and try to rescue those spirits from we see, we see in, in the spirit's book, uh, not the spirit book, but spiritist books, the literature, they'll teach us of these moments of this spirits that even after, there are spirits that even in the afterlife, they don't believe in reincarnation. But would they not reincarnate because they don't believe in reincarnation? Guess what? They would still reincarnate. So these are laws. These are the laws of God, the divine laws. And once we understand these laws and we bring them inside of us, inside of our brains, inside of our hearts, then we can face almost everything. I say almost everything because remember, we're still in a stage of evolution that certain things are very hard for us. But we can face almost anything, don't we? Don't we feel, don't we feel strong with the knowledge and the force that we feel inside of us? Can, and even when we're in pain, because remember, for the person that has faith in God, understands its ways, that person, that person will never despair. And even through pain, that person will not freeze up. And you understand when I say freeze up? Because sometimes when we are going through something too very hard, we have two, sometimes we'll have, we can have two types of, well, there are three. The person with faith will be a, will feel pain, will cry, of course, but what? Still trust God, it's, still trust his way. Then there's a second way we can react. We freeze up, meaning what? It's like everything that you know you knew, it doesn't work, it doesn't work for you anymore. Just you see everything that you're studying, trying to acquire the seeds to exist when you're facing something difficult. Or the third option. You just say that, oh, this is not all a lie. Right? Some people just go all the other way. They're, they have their faith, their understanding, but once something bad happens, they drop it all. 
in the moment that they should grab it with all their force, right? They should grab it hard, they just drop it. And they should not drop it. It's when we need it, we need faith the most. It's when these things are happening. And I ask you, how are you right now? How is your faith? How do you work your faith? Have you been through something tough lately? How did you react? I'll ask you this question. I'm asking you these questions because everything we say and study here are only good if we're using it for ourselves. Because if we come here and then someone talks, we see the PowerPoints that I don't have. <laughs> we, don't see. we don't see the PowerPoints. I will go back home and then someone will ask, how was the sense? Why did they talk? Well, it was something about faith, blah, blah, blah. And then you don't. <laughs> so what are you doing? What are we doing? We're here. This is a, this is a very special moment that we're having. Because how many places in the world we have the, this opportunity of sitting and talking openly about the things of God the way we are? With the open arms, without judging. We're not, we can't judge anything because we understand we're all in the same boat. Right? Without judgment. Really having our, the best interest of all of us in, in mind and heart. So I'll ask you, when, the, when was the last time you went through something tough? How did you react? Because that's how you know how your faith is. Because it's very easy to be very, like have showing strong faith here at the center, right? Everyone's here, so you're very like, hi, how are you? Right? Everyone is okay, everyone's together. The spirits, they're here, making sure. So here is like a special place, so it's not here that you're, you're going to measure how your faith is. It's when you go through hard things in life. And it's when you're testing yourself. And you're testing how long have you gone. Like how far I, did I move up? Did I move up a little bit? Because if you let, when, when the way you reacted last time was better or a little better than the one before that, guess what? That's great. That's great news. You mean that you it means that you have improved. And that's why we're here. We're here to improve. And it's so sad when we hear people that say, you know what, I was born this way and I'm gonna die this way. And you say, Really? What a waste of reincarnation. What are you doing? You're born this way and you you're gonna make sure you die the same way? Like that's a waste. So many spirits that want to reincarnate, you just just wasted a perfectly good body, right? So that and having and we have uh, the spirits they talk talk to us about the divine faith and the human faith. And when Jesus said to the apostles, "If you have faith, what even the size of a mustard seed." And how small is a mustard seed? It's a tiny, tiny little <laughs> seed. So if you have that size, so you don't need a lot. Jesus is not even asking, because Jesus, he really loves us, because he never asked us for much, did he? He did not, he did not, and he was so patient. He is patient with us. That's why we love him, I love him so much, and I'm sure all of you love him so much, because we gotta send our love back, because he sends all this love to us, we have to send it back to him. And this tiny little seed of faith, the apostles would have been able to uh, take care of that spirit and help that child. But they did not. Because probably what were they waiting for? Who they were waiting for? For Jesus. And David. David read here beautifully. He didn't read, he was, he was saying, right? I'm like, I should just leave him, he would do my talk. <laughs> 10 more minutes. But it was very beautiful. Thank you, David, for that. But when he said about being humble, that we have to be, be humble. You have to be humble. And when we say, well, we gotta believe in yourself, but some people say, well, but that's not humility. How can I believe in myself and being humble all the time? Well, being humble,
it means that you know in your place your place in society you know your place on earth you know that you need others right but you know also that you got talents knowing that you can it's not being not it's not it's, you're not showing that you're not humble you just know you can you are the image of god didn't jesus say we are the image of god so who are we to think we're less than that if god created us his image it's we we can't think we're less than that so the apostles didn't have that little bit because they were waiting for jesus and didn't don't we sometimes wait for god and don't we wait for jesus don't we wait for the spirits to make the things happen in our lives? Because we don't have faith in, sometimes we lack faith in ourselves, don't we? We wait for other people sometimes. If we're not waiting for Jesus to do it, God to do it, because we want them to serve us, right? We don't want to be, <laughs> Jesus taught us that we have to serve. But what we want, we want the opposite. We want Jesus to serve us, right? Because we tell him and tell our God what we want. We give them our list, wish list. Okay, I want this. And then after that, I want that. We have to go after what we want because it's up to us. And that's why Jesus said that we need to move this faith, believe in what we have and move it. And one, one example, when we understand and we really want is magnetism. We know we all have that. We all have magnetism. And that's, we know miracles don't exist. Miracles don't exist. Miracles are phenomena that we don't understand. Well, now we, d we do understand because the spirits, they explain to us. So it's gen Genesis. If you go to Genesis, they, they're, they're good explanations. There are a whole chapter about miracles there. So miracles are what? Exactly the use. And Jesus knew how to manipulate, how to use his faith, his power to move the energy, the magnetism around him. And he said it clearly that we all have this power, but we have to have faith in order to use it, to move it in our favor and in favor of what? Of others. And usually when we do for others, what we, we're creating this good aura and around us. And we know the, the, the law of affinity. What is the law of affinity? Harmony. We'll attract what we give out. Right? No one receives what you don't, you're not gonna receive something you don't have. So we'll, whatever we put out is what we get. So even if it's a, with this aura, if a aura of goodness, when you're doing good, you're helping others, that's what we're gonna attract to us. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna go through hard hardships because that's part of the school we're in. But it's just, you're gonna, remember, you're not gonna freeze. You're not gonna deny. You're gonna go through it. You're gonna pass through it and you're gonna win that moment. Because it's one moment, it's one lesson. You're just gonna learn and be okay and wait for others, other lessons. So life doesn't end when we go through something hard. It's just the beginning, the beginning of new lessons. And you just go through it and there are gonna be another and another. And so we, we, sometimes the people ask, well, so if you need faith in order to be healed, right? It means that I don't have faith if I'm not healed. Have you heard a person ask that? Well, I have a, a, a illness or a, a, it could be any type of illness, but let's talk about here, for example, a body. You have a, a problem with an organ or a disease. And then this person might say, well, if Jesus said that if I had faith, I would be healed. So does it mean that I don't really have faith? It means that it's a little bit more complicated than that. <laughs> it's not as simple as that. Your faith is part of the equation, but it has to be the moment for you to receive that to not need that disease anymore, that problem anymore, to remind you of something that you need to learn. Because remember, the main objective here, of all of us here, is to learn. 
to be better, to evolve. So everything that we're going through are lessons. Until we learn these lessons, guess what? These things are going to keep happening and happening and happening to us. And the spirits, they do sometimes the work here. Beautiful. It's a beautiful work. And they will help people. And sometimes they will prevent certain things to happen, even start happening. But there is something called free will, right? And if they know, if they detect that that person, that individual, has not learned the lesson, that that, whatever is happening to them is needed, guess what they do? They'll leave it alone for a little bit, and they'll let it happen. <coughs> and Andrea Luis explains that too. And Andrea Luis, he got upset. Because remember, Andrea Luis, I don't know if you, you're all familiar, but Andrea Luis is the spirit that passed and then came back and was channeled by Chico Xavier. He was be a doctor. And he, exp he came back to tell us what happened to him, the life in the spiritual world, all the experiences that he went through. And one of the experiences um, was to follow a, a spirit that used to work at a spirit center. And they were taking care of this man. And this man had many opportunities, was taught many, many like different people, different occasions of his life. He had the opportunity to know that he <coughs> had to change some ways, certain behaviors, certain thoughts. He knew he had to change, he had the information. His brain knew that he had to change. And when he was the process, when the process of acquiring all those know all this knowledge, the, the spirits were helping him with a problem that he has in his, had his, in his liver. But after 10 weeks, they noticed that he did not change his ways. And the spirits gave him a little breather, because the spirits do that. What they do, they gave, give us a little breather so we can but move on. That is that little push that we need. And he was not, he didn't change his ways. So the spirit that was in charge of the healing said, the treatment, I shall say, because healing is up to each one of us. No one gives healing, but yourself can heal yourself. That's why and Jesus explained that too, when he said that your faith made you well. So Andrea Luis got upset when the spirit, when this, the person came in, this person came in, and he told the technicians, the spirit technicians, don't work so hard on his liver now. He's like, but if this is a lack of charity, you, get, you gotta help him. How are you not gonna help him? That's not the objective. The objective is not to heal the body. The objective is to what? Heal what? The soul. And he needs it. So let, let him go through it. Who we'll help him? Who we'll awaken him to the things that he needs to learn? Maybe you change his behavior. So, one thing that we have to ask: um, Are we when we get those breathers? Because we know when we're getting that help from from the spiritual world, are we enjoying that moment to change our habits, to get a little better, to pray a little more, to watch our talk? to watch our behavior, are we doing that? Because this is all part of developing our faith. So I'm, I'm gonna finish, is it time to finish? It's still 15 minutes. So I'm gonna finish now by a, and, and by the way, everything I said here has nothing to do with my presentation. So <laughs> <laughs> I can present my presentation <laughs> next time. Uh, but which is good. I hope every, at least we can. At least I uh, probably I needed to hear that. Whatever. Um, Martin Luther King said that faith is taking the first step, even if you don't see the ladder, the whole ladder. And sometimes we ourselves we want to see the whole picture, don't we? We want to understand the mind of God. And remember, you just have to give that first step. That's what is needed from you, from me right now. The first step. So take care of that first step. 
and you're going to be okay. Okay? Thank you so much.